Welcome back to A Little Faith. I'm Matt, and I'm here with Miriam Badger, a midwife, a mother, and an all-around lovely individual. So you're you're somebody who's like always on the move. Uh, like I I've, I saw you at Picton, like when was it? A couple months ago or whatever. Yeah. You like had maple in one arm. I think you might have been like pushing a stroller too and like shuffling about. But one one piece that uh, of your life that you mentioned earlier that I was wanted to insert a question about was having a prosthetic leg. And like you mentioned, like you couldn't wear your leg up until you carried maple full term, and yeah. it's been something that you've had for your whole life. And since I was five, yes, yeah. so oh, okay. I wasn't born. I wasn't born without a leg. I acquired missing a leg through um, I ended up having osteogenic sarcoma uh, which was a, a diagnosis of a bone cancer um, when I was five. Oh my word yeah so then uh, so then I had to have my leg amputated at that time that was really the only option was amputation and then keep and then a, um, a dose like or doses of chemotherapy so. What was that like when you were five? Did you did you have a like an idea of God at that time, or would you say that you had faith at that time? I, yeah, I mean, I, I think I, I definitely had my parents' faith, like you know, in a small, yeah. in, a, in a way of a child. Um, I have very vivid memories of my mother sitting by my bed and reading her Bible, and. Um, and I knew that there was something, I knew that um, there was something, there must have been something very valuable about what she was doing at that time. I didn't totally understand, but, yeah. you know, but, um, um, yeah, can, um, can I go forward and kind of connect oh, you a can, couple you things? Can, you can go I, forward, okay. you can go backwards, <laughs> you can go any direction you want. There's a really interesting thing that happened. Um, so the hospital that I went for my surgery was Sick Children's in Toronto, and it ended up that um, uh, the, that's where Maple was too. So she was flown there. We had the choice of being able to go to Chio, which is in Ottawa, or Sick Kids. So. We asked that she'll she go to sick kids, and that's where they were thinking of sending her, anyways. Um, so it was an interesting, um, a really interesting, amazing um, um, experience having her in the hospital that I had been in. So even though huh. the actual rooms that she was in, that was a new part of the hospital that was built after after I had left, but. Um, I went back into the hallways of um, where I had been and where my memories took me. And so they're mostly just the rooms and the wards were mostly just offices now. So I just took the elevator up um, one day and with my mom and, and we looked around and tried to find a couple of the spots where that were, you know, I had clear memories of. And um, it was a really... Uh, confirming I guess experience being in the same place where I knew that my parents had prayed for me and that many other people had prayed and actually some of the same people were praying for Maple they were still around you know that and they prayed for me and for my family at that time and um, it was um, a very powerful experience uh, um, walking around in those hallways again and um, and my dad uh, passed away about uh, nine years ago and and oh. it um, you know being in the place where I knew he had been um, mm -hmm. praying for me and I um, know that he th those same prayers you know would have been for maple wow. and um, it was it felt very close you know to him again and to my parents huh. what you know um, what they have taught me about their faith, you know, um, sort of happening over again and my and my mom being with us and, and having those experiences as well and um, sort of reliving some of those things, but but in a positive way too, um, you know, because, you know, that God has brought us through and um, and we have, you know, survived other trials and that we would get through this as well. And 
Um, my mom was with us in the waiting room uh, when we were waiting during maple surgery, which was, you know, took all day or like about eight or nine hours of surgery. And reflecting on um, who was with her, you know, and praying with her during that time of her waiting for my surgery. And um, yeah, just, um, you know, I think, I think we, the chapter in Hebrews, when it has all these different people's lives, like we also draw on those things. We draw on other people's faith and, and experiences. And, you know, I definitely was drawing on my parents' experience um, to help me through this mm -hmm. experience as well. And I think that helped Aaron too, like my mom being there and sharing so much during that time that Aaron sort of really connected, even though, you know, he obviously wasn't around. Yeah. Um, but um, being able to, to almost like vicariously. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's definitely a vicariousness um, to faith, um, which I think is a really interesting aspect of it. And I think, you know, um, that's definitely in my toolkit like when you, you know when I think about like what I draw on I also draw on other people's experiences mm. one just to touch on one interesting experience as well uh, not long after I had had cancer there was um, a family that was very close to us in in the same meeting that I was growing up in the same Christadelphian church um, and their son um, had cancer and so he was also at sick kids and um, he had a brain tumor and, um, and, you know, the same prayers, the same people were praying for him and, you know, and actually he didn't, um, survive his cancer mm. and, wow. and this was with me, you know, through these experiences with Maple, right? Yeah. Because I, I knew that, um, you know, and, um, and that family still have great faith, you know, and so just because, you know, I mean, we can have a lot of questions around it and it's not wrong to question. And I think it's really healthy to try to work these things all through, like why their family, why not ours, you know, why will Maple, why is Maple pulled through? And there's other kids here, it's the kids who I know haven't, you know, in, even in the people that we've met in the time. And these things don't have easy answers, um, you know, um, but one of the touchstone things is that it's, trusting trusting in in god and um you know whether our lives you know face death and ultimately uh, you know we do die or people around us die um is not the end of the story you know mm -hmm. and i think a lot of people in hebrews 11 faced challenges to do with death and i think i think death is one of one of our greater if not the greatest challenge as the human experience you know to then still have faith in God um, mm. through either being confronted with death ourselves confronted with death of people that we're extremely close to um, you know I think um, to challenge us um, because God in his wisdom and in his justice he can't just pick and choose, just save all the people in this lifetime um, that pray and ask him to, because, or just Christadelphians, or just, you know, sure, just, right. Right, just people of faith. And um, that would be unjust. And the justice that is, is that we all have to go through very challenging things. And some life will be lost before time, you know, and, and, um, but if it isn't like we're challenged with confronting it, you know, at some point in our lives. And, um, and I think it's the core of, you know, of one of the challenges of faith. Um, and, you know, and I think it ties it back again to creation. Like, do we trust that he's got this big plan that he's had from the beginning of time? you know, from before time, without time even mm. existing, you know, mm. and are we, are we, are we, um, on board with his, his big picture, mm. you know, the big picture that he has, not just, not just these, and, and they're not small things, like, but not just these challenges in our lives that we run up against. He's got, you know, a, such a big picture happening. Mm. 
Um, mm. Yeah. Man, you just you just span like all the great philosophical questions of all time. <laughs> like you just like took it and ran with it. So uh, I want to go back to you you at Sick Kids. Is that what it was called? Yeah, Sick Children's and uh, Sick Kids in Toronto. Yeah. Okay. And this idea of the space where faith is. Um, or like this like faith time capsule or um, another phrase that came to my mind when you were talking about that was you were, that was where you were talking about vicarious faithing and uh, just like where faith has deep roots. Um, and for you, there's this really poetic and moving picture of faith existing in this place in this hospital where you were you were facing possible death and maple was you know she's she's okay now Mm -hmm. but um but she was there too and here and like here in this in this building there's these like prayers that run at like an artery depth level from your parents to you and Aaron being parents to the people who are around you at that time, the people who are rallying around Maple at that time. And it just has my brain wondering about like, where can, where do we stand? Um, yes. At, at points of great trial and find faith that has been shown before, like the, the rivers run through it and we can, we can follow that path, which is kind of what was happening. And where are the spaces that we can stand where we know we are deeply loved? Uh, and we know that like faith is vibrant and alive. And I'm just so curious if there's like a, we have this, this bookend over here, um, but I'm wondering if you have a, a bookend over here as well, where there's this similar deep rootedness and almost homecoming of faith, but instead of a um, really challenging trial, it's a uh, really beautiful and rejuvenating and that flourishing aspect of faith. Um, yeah, I'm curious to see if, if there's a space that, you, that you've stood where you've had a similar experience, but, but uh, positive. I wish I had more time to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I have, I'm processing I, it. Yeah. I'm just processing yeah, this out loud. Really I'm asking question. myself this question too. Like, where do I stand? Where are, are the hollows of my deepest fear where faith has been present before? And where do I stand that uh, faith has come alive and I go back to? Um, and I think I have some superficial answers, but not to the depth of uh, your yeah, experience of having cancer in the hospital and Maple, you know having a heart condition that's life-threatening. Is there anything that you wish that I would have asked you about? Or is there anything, thinking about our conversation, is there anything that stands out to you as particularly meaningful? I think I, I think the question that you've asked me that I don't know how to answer the question to, <laughs> like, it actually, mm. is, is, is there something maybe really profound about that? Had you thought about that faith rootedness of, of the hospital and like you, that, that was a very deliberate thing for you, like when you were there, um, like you were very conscious of mm-hmm. like the faith or is it only like as time has, has passed in thinking about it that you've realized like, oh, like there was a lot happening in that building. No, I realized it at the time and okay. it um, uh, made me want to go and, and be in some of the places that I had in my yeah. memory to like be in the waiting room where my, because it is a different waiting room now for the surgery, like be in the waiting room where my mom and my grandfather were, her memories of, of who was waiting with her during the surgery and who was who was supporting her. And, um, and yeah, just, I, I realized it at the time. And um, you know, another, and maybe this answer is a little bit to what you're, what you're trying to get at like Mm. with is there um is there this place that you've been in where you've also felt um I don't know what the word was that you use but uh flourishing flourishing yeah Yeah, yeah. so maybe um it could be in the same building in a sense because 
Um, so I used to have sort of a, a memento box of, um, of everything from the hospital and there was a list that I had of all the people that had sent my mom and dad um, cards and mm. um, gifts and you know um, money and like all different types of ways of giving and there was this list and people's names and um, I remember reading through that list and knowing most of the people on that list but the amazing thing is is that a lot of those same people um, uh, so when we came back or when we were in the hospital there was things happening like that for us where you know um, messages um, you know gifts of money and support and and prayers and a lot of them the same people you know mm. um, uh, and just thinking of the threads even through like our greater our community of, of people that we have you know yeah. um, and when we came back here to the house um, for about a month there was letters that were coming through the mail and I think that's a like that's a very affirming um, amazing um, thing that actually helps you feel mm. um, uh, uh, f to flourish, you know, to go forward and then hopefully to do that for other people, mm. you know. Um, so there's some real strong threads with that for me that have kind of come full circle. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, of love and support. That's a beautiful thought. How would, how, how would you describe your faith now? Or how would you describe your faith life now? Yeah, I mean, I guess I, you know, you feel cautious in a way, like, or maybe I just do. And Aaron and I were talking about this before, kind of meeting with you, like, um, and maybe, maybe we, you know, with the, um, the people that are listed in Hebrews 11, I don't think that I put them on pedestal, you know, like I, I try not to do that with, with things in my life or with people in my life. I don't know. You don't want to put yourself in the chapter of Hebrews 11. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, um, you can't compare yourself to yes, the pain to like Moses of, or like yeah. to, you know, and not that they wouldn't want us to be saying that about them. I don't think like if we, you know, because their challenges were God, it was God that brought these things into their lives, you know, and, and, um, and really the core of what we are all responding to is, um, is uh, this faith in God's bigger, big plan, um, and ultimately the plan of of you know of of resurrection and um, you know and and seeing Jesus you know and all of us being given this gift of eternal life together like they're also waiting for all of us you know mm. to all be given it together, and um, so I don't know it's hard to I just know my faith has been challenged. And to put it lightly, yeah, and um, and I know I've wrestled a lot and mm. uh, with God and questioned a lot of things, um, and but I just know there's nothing else. I know through working through all of these things and um, comparing um, these challenges and what they've produced, you know, and pushing your character and growing your character that there has to also be some bigger plan um, for that mm. and um, and to me that is a cohesive that makes sense in my mind and in my life and mm -hmm. how you know with the things that I've faced and um, and so I um, when I everything gets whittled down when you get challenged with things um, and put under a lot of pressure, things very quickly, a lot of very meaningless things disappear, and it helps to really channel um, uh, very core things. Mm. And so very core things of knowing that God is sovereign, you know, is is where that leaves me, and it doesn't, it doesn't leave me, like it, all these challenges keep reinforcing that those same 
those same concepts and it makes me also want to be there with all the people you know in Hebrews 11 we can't we won't be able to see God without faith you know we won't we won't be able to be a part of things without faith you know there mm-hmm. has to be there has to be core elements that we've developed along the way to to make us want to challenge our concepts of God and, and what he does and you know I it, it re it keeps solidifying I guess it can or it can you know push you the other way because in those questioning and those challenges you know um, I think that it can make you feel like this is all chaos this is all a mess like you know there is no God therefore mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's a lot, a lot more complicated decision making than that, but but it could, it can lead to that, and and it can lead to questioning that way. And but if we don't question that way, and then try to figure out whether whether um, and and resolve those questions, uh, one way or the other. Um, and how come you have? And how come you haven't gone down the chaos? The I mean, you've had your fair share, fair share of challenges. Like, what is it that has kept you from just saying, you know what, all of this is, we're just here, it's happen chance, it's a chaotic mess. Creation does play a big part in my in my touchstone of, of, of faith. You've it up a number yeah, of times. Yeah, it does, yeah. and it does. And I think it's really interesting because I've been reading over Hebrews 11, like thinking about talking with you and like over and over again, and... Um, and, and then it just suddenly kind of, I realized that that verse was in there in the early chapter and, um, but, and yet it's something that Aaron and I, like we were, um, that we, that it's our touchstone and what we're constantly kind of referring back to.